The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The second of the Advent candles is lit to remember the prophets. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas tide and show all the world God's love. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who sent word to Zachariah that he and Elizabeth would bear a son in their old age, Enable us also to be ready to hear your calling on our lives. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ibrathar, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty, in the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. 
for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. We came down that we might have love. We came down that we might have love. We came down that we might have love. Alleluia forevermore. He came down that we might have light. He came down that we might have light. He came down that we might have light. Alleluia forevermore. He came down that we might have peace. He came down that we might have peace. He came down that we might have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we might have joy. He came down that we might have joy. He came down that we might have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, even before his birth he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. 
When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realised that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months he remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favourably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we heard the story of Zechariah. This is something we don't often hear in church. Normally during Advent we have readings about the end times and of waiting and hoping. But in this parish we decided this year that we've had rather a lot of waiting and hoping during the year. So instead we would tell elements of the Christmas story. Elements which would often be told either at a carol service or a crib service. But as we can't have those in person this year and online we do shorter services, uh, we felt if we ran them in the run up to Christmas it would give an opportunity for people to hear them again and for people to come and take part in the services in a way that they can't with the carol and crib service. So Zechariah, how do you know what God's call on your life is? You might have thought Zechariah would be an expert. He was a priest, he was from a family of priests, he took his turn serving at the temple and when he is in the Holy of Holies an angel comes and speaks to him. But does he take any notice? No. And I think sometimes we can be like that. I suspect very few of us will hear an angel come and talk to us. But certainly most of the ordained people that I know, when they first heard God, God's call, went in the other direction. A bit like Jonah. So how do we know what God's call for us is? I think there are a number of things that are worth looking at. The first is, if you find what you think you are doing for God has become a chore, then it probably isn't God's call for you at present. If you find what you do, which you think is God's call on you, gives you joy, then there's a good chance that it is what God is calling you to. But these things don't stay the same. They have their seasons, they come, they go. And you might want to ponder where you are in your call. To illustrate this, it's perhaps worth looking at my own life. When I started exploring ordination, one of the questions that I was asked was a more detailed question about what my call was. And different people will have different calls. It is about how we serve God. And my answer then was that I wanted to change the church. I wanted to use my management skills to make the church a better place. That won't be everybody's experience, but that was mine. And for the past 20 years, that's what I've been doing. And yet last year, when I came back from 
uh, my sabbatical, I found that that had become a chore. That was something which I no longer found joy in. And so Leslie and I had a conversation and I haven't completely stopped doing it, but I've certainly cut back the amount of that kind of work I do. Now it's worth saying at this point that we can have more than one call because whilst I'm no longer called to do that work, I still feel called to serve this place just in different ways, some of which I haven't yet worked out haven't heard God's new call on my life here. But one of the things that happens is that when you find that you are starting to find something a chore, when you give up, very often somebody else steps forward and for them it is a joy. And very often, when something is a joy, people spend more time and are better at it. Our call is finding where our skills meet the world's need, meet the church's need. That is usually in some form of service. And it can be all sorts of different things. And where it gets difficult is that sometimes the idea of what you are feeling called to is scary, is outside your comfort zone, outside my comfort zone. That was certainly true of my call to the priesthood. And it took a good while for me to get accustomed to the idea and to accept it. An example again from my own life. Early in my uh, journey towards ordination I did a placement at a hospital and as part of that I was encouraged or I was asked to take uh, one of the patients to their AA meeting. I felt a bit uncomfortable about this um, but it was it was it was life-changing because what I found there I didn't go into the meeting I waited outside but at the end of the meeting other people left before the patient and I found myself you know they would say hello to me and I realised that if it, if it had been me and I'd seen this stranger, I'd have been hurrying away, sort of head down. Um, after all, it is Alcoholics Anonymous. And yet they had this acceptance of themselves, which I realised that I didn't have. Now, you have to be careful because having that acceptance isn't an excuse not to do something. Sometimes we do have to go outside our comfort zone. But sometimes it isn't our call. Sometimes our call is in another space. And that is where the difficulty comes in discerning what is our call and what is not. As I think I've mentioned before, I follow a daily commentary on the rule of St. Benedict, written by Joan Chittister. And what that has to say about knowing God's will is that when we have tried without ceasing and prayed with all our strength to change something, what is left is God's will for us. And there is sometimes a sense there that God's will is that thing that we have a love-hate relationship with. 
We don't want to do it. But we can't leave it alone. It's a little bit like Leslie described, or Leslie's DDO described, uh, the call to ordination. She called it divine toothache. It is this ache that you want to go away, but you can't help but run your tongue around it. And finally, one of the things which happens is when we find God's call for us, we do find a deep sense of joy. A little bit like Zechariah, who when he eventually announced that John's name was John, got his voice back. And I'm sure that he and Elizabeth were delighted. And I pray that you may find your call and that in the same way as you grow into it, you may be delighted. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for promising to hear us when we pray in faith. Still our hearts, allow our anxieties to drift away as we listen for your word speaking to us personally. We begin our prayers today by thanking you for the gifts that you bestow upon us. We all have flair, so many different talents that can be used for others to enjoy. The gift of music, both in composing and playing, that can fill our hearts with joy. The gift of art that can lift our spirits, the many ways in which we can use our hands from which others can benefit. Gardening, cooking, craft, art and the gift of patience that enable people, um, that en enable people to be wonderful carers and nurses. Allow us to discover our own talents, the way we may use wisely and for the benefit of us all. Help us to encourage our own families to search for ways in which too they can share their endowments with others and not waste these precious gifts. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our country. We pray for our Prime Minister and his government who are facing such difficult times. We ask you to bless all politicians that they may join together to help our country face the COVID virus. We pray for our royal family and thank them for the many hours of work that they put in to help visitors to our country um, and, um, who want to continue to encourage to bring their own friends to our beautiful country. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we now turn to the problems in the world as a whole. There is so much work to do to find peace and harmony with the many powerful nations. So much greed and a need for power governs the way so many of these countries are led. And we ask you to somehow find a way into these leaders' hearts so that they may see the futility of their actions and show compassion their own citizens, many of whom are dying from disease and starvation, unable to receive any help. Let them feel your presence. We thank you for the many volunteers who work tirelessly to help wherever they possibly can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whom we know, who are suffering in body, mind or spirit whose pain can often be interminable with no light at the end of the tunnel. We pray for families who worry and agonise over their loved ones and sometimes become isolated and bereft. Help us to do what we can to offer them support and encouragement. We pray for the doctors, nurses and carers who do their utmost to try and relieve the terrible suffering that they have to face each day. Let us be silent for a moment to think of those dear to us. We also remember those whose anniversary of their passing occurs during this month. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for residents of Bishop's Road, Heath Close, Poplar Walk and Wayward Lane. 
Father, we pray for our parish and for our own community here in Hale and Badshot Lee. We pray for Leslie and for Alan as they continue to lead us through this terrible time. And for the church wardens, Pamela, Bob and Bill and the other lay readers who all work so hard to coordinate the activities that go on within our parish. We thank you for the time they spend preparing to guide us through the services each week, allowing to, us to feel refreshed and spirits uplifted. We pray for the many volunteers within the parish in our church to help the church community run smoothly. Without them, the church would not be the place it is. We pray for those who are busy looking towards the future of the parish and laying forward plans. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves. How easy it is to get tangled up with so many worries and anxieties that sometimes we cannot, uh, we cannot think straight. We try to think of ways of helping the many people of whom we are concerned and thus get to the point that there does not seem as much pleasure anymore. Allow us to hand over our burdens to you and to trust you to sort things out. Let us share the serenity prayer. God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace is taking us. He did this sinful world as it is, not as he would have it, trusting that he will make things all right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Lord, send us ready to do your work. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.